All right, guys, so let's talk about syncing audio with video in Pro Tools. All right, guys, so they're doing construction outside again. I hope it's not too uh, disturbing for you guys. Uh, hopefully it's kind of quiet in the background on your end. But I'm sorry. Uh, I do film these at home, at my desk at home. So uh, there's that. I don't know what to tell you. I'm sorry if it's loud. All right, so I just opened up this audio post session using my template that I use for my YouTube videos, and I'm just gonna import a video. So I'm just gonna go file, import video. And I have this movie here. I'm not gonna import the audio because I don't need it. Uh, I'm just gonna show you an example of lining up some audio with this video clip. So this clip I actually got from this website called mixkit.co. They have free stock video and they're really, it's pretty good. I think it's pretty good. I'm not a visual person, but um, I just wanted to point out where I got it from in case any of you guys were wondering. And uh, thank you to mixkit.co for that. All right, so here's my session. I know we've talked about importing video before, but just in case you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link up in uh, on the cards at the top right corner of the screen there. But also, um, when we're importing video, we wanna check that on this video track, our FPS, so that's frames per second, uh, matches that of the Pro Tools session. So right now I'm good, it's white, but sometimes it's not gonna match and you just wanna go set up session and then you wanna to go to the time code rate and match that value. So if it doesn't match, you'll notice that it's red. And then when it's matching and you're good to go, it's gonna be white. All right, so once we have that match, we're good to mess around with this video. All right, so basically I can pull up my video window. I can either go to the window menu up top here, or I can hold command and hit nine on the numeric keypad, and that's going to open up this video window. All right, so I picked this video for you guys. I hope you like it. Um, I'm trying to speak to my audience here, and I know YouTube tells me that sometimes it says 100% of you are male, so here we are. Uh, with this video. So I'm gonna hit play so you can see what the video is like. There's no audio yet because I have these tracks uh, disabled. So that's the video clip that I have. I'm gonna talk about one way that I like to personally line up audio with video. And I'm gonna do that using some um, sounds of a girl walking in high heels. And I could do like, it might be more realistic to have like her walking barefoot here, but I'm gonna use the high heels example because it's a little more, um, the transients are gonna be a little bit sharper and clearer and easier to see. And I think it's like a little bit better of an example. So um, that's what I'm gonna be using for the sound. I also, you know, I just grabbed grabbed a high heel sound off of my sound library here, but I would probably go through my library more carefully and try to find something that really matches it if I were gonna actually use this in a film. So I'm gonna do Command Shift I to import audio. I'm gonna find that sound effect that I already picked out here. I'm gonna hit Convert. And I wanna hit Convert, right, because that actually copies it into your audio files folder. If you hit Add, it's just gonna reference it from wherever it is. So you always wanna hit Copy or Convert if you're going to be then moving your Pro Tools session, right? So we want all the audio that we bring into our Pro Tools session to move with the Pro Tools session usually. So to do that, we do Copy or Convert. And I'm just going to hit Done. I'm gonna put it here in my audio files folder. And I'm gonna put it on a new track here so I don't have to find it in the clip list. I don't think my clip list is super long anyway because I just used a template to start this session, but I'm gonna do a new track here. So here's some high heel sounds. So let me put on my headphones. I'm gonna find a spot where there's a footstep sound. So there are a few footstep sounds. Let me just pull this up so it's a little bit bigger, this one track that I'm working on. And let me, I'm gonna actually make this smaller because I don't really need that so much. Um, and basically what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take the audio zoom, I'm gonna boost it up so I can really see where those transients are. And I'm also going to then separate out these footsteps. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna go into tab to transients mode. So that is this button right here. 
And I think I have a video on normal tab versus tab to transient. So I'll try to put a card up on the screen for that as well. So I'm just gonna hit tab and it's gonna tab to like the beginning of that footstep sound. And then I'm gonna hit B to break. You can also hit command E to break, right? But it's, uh, it's up to you if you wanna use those keyboard commands, focus mode shortcuts or not. I'm just gonna separate out a few of these footsteps. And a lot of times what I'll do, you can kind of hear the difference sometimes between left and right footsteps with any given person, with any given actor. But sometimes I like to, keeping in mind which ones were left and right footsteps, I like to then rearrange the footsteps a little bit based on you know, where they're walking, what it looks like visually on the screen. I'm just gonna do a quick uh, lining lining up audio example here for you guys. So I'm not gonna finesse it as much as I would otherwise. But I'm just gonna delete this stuff before these uh, footsteps that we're working with here. And let me see, oops, let me see where the end of what I did here was. Oops. So I'm going to take these and these should each be their own footstep now. That's pretty cool. I'm just gonna drag them over towards where she's walking. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look for, and this works for any actor, right? When they take a step, you don't have to actually see their foot hitting the ground. You look for when they shift their weight. Is That's how I do it personally. So I'm looking for when she shifts her weight. Since she's also in a bikini, I can kind of see when she makes that like final step, the actual point where her foot hits the ground and her weight shifts. Um, you can also kind of see a little bit of, I hate to do this because she's like gorgeous and skinny, but um, you can see a little bit of jiggle here. So um, I'm looking for those two things. So there's one jiggle there, one weight shift. So let's try to match to that one. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pick whichever footstep I think matches that step the most. So right now I'm just gonna grab my first one here just for the sake of the example. And you'll notice in Pro Tools as you drag a clip around, on the actual video window, it's going to display for you the head of the clip, the beginning of the clip here. That's what it's actually showing me. So if I click here with my selector, it's showing me where my selector is. But when I highlight a clip here, it's gonna actually show the beginning of that clip, the head of that clip highlight. So I'm taking advantage of that and I'm trying to get it kind of as close as possible. So usually what I do is I start ahead of where the actual footstep is that I'm trying to match, and then I'll drag it along and kind of look for that point. So I think that was kind of it. Let me hit play here. I'm gonna do that second one. So let's match it to that one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag along and look for that point. Oops. And you'll notice that I'm kind of zoomed out so it's harder to be more precise about it, but I get it in the general location and then I'll zoom in and be more precise. So that's kind of where the shift is here. So you can kind of see her shift if you kind of drag the cursor. There's the shift right there. So I'm gonna to try to drag this point, this clip to that point, and then I'm gonna zoom in again. Oops. And that's basically how you do it. Let's see. Um, maybe rewind to zoom in again. Gosh, this one's kind of hard. I'm like looking for the jiggle here, but I think actually looking at her weight shifting might be better. Let me go back and play it.
think that's pretty good. That's the general idea. You could then refine it a little bit better if you want. Really look for that exact point where the weight shifts. Um, actually, I think I have it pretty well. I was going to be more precise here and move it a little bit more, but it actually looks kind of decent. Um, so then I'll always add like a tiny little fade um, just to make sure that I don't have a speaker pop there. And then I usually add kind of a long fade out on my footsteps. And that's kind of just because when you're looking at a recording of footsteps, you know, or any recording, you're going to have a little bit of room tone in there, um, a little bit of the sound of the room or the booth where it was recorded. And so when we finish our footstep, I don't want like an abrupt shift when it goes from like something with room tone to negative space here. And that, you know, it doesn't matter so much if you have a bunch of different layers of audio, but if you just have like a few layers of stuff of things then um, of audio, then it matters a little bit more. So I tend to just do that just to be sure. And then I would just line up the other ones. So there's that. Um, and then also if I was mixing this in, I would obviously make this uh, a little bit quieter. I would probably try to change how it sounds acoustically. So I might add reverb if they're in an echoey space, for example. Um, and that's about it for how I tend to line up footsteps or sounds that start with a really abrupt transient shift. Um, another thing that I will do is if there's not an abrupt transient shift at the beginning of the sound, so let's say this is one constant sound that's kind of um, at a constant level for the whole thing. And let's say I want to line up this point. So this footstep with her stepping. Um, one thing I could do is find that point where she's stepping. So let me just mute this for a second because it's distracting me. There it is. There's the step. It's right around here. So let's say the step is exactly These faster movements always take longer to line up. Let's see. I think it's right about here is the weight shift. So let's say that's where the weight shift is. So I'm just going to hit enter here on my numeric keypad to create a location for where that goes. You don't really need to make a marker to do this. You can kind of visually do it sometimes, but um, I'm going to unmute this. So command M. I muted it by hitting command M, by the way. So the goal here is to line up this point on the audio with uh, this point in the video. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take advantage of the fact that when I highlight a clip, it's going to show me the head of the clip on my video window. And then also when I click and grab on a clip, it's going to keep my position. It's going to show me where the clip previously was, and it's also going to show me uh, my cursor, my mouse, is in the same exact point relative to this ghosted clip image here that's moving around as I drag it around. So those are the two things I'm taking advantage of. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and line it up here with the point where the step is. So that's where I want to ultimately have this line up, right? So once it's lined up with the point where you want it, I'm going to then, I'm going to zoom in just so I can be more precise here. Maybe zoom out a little. I'm going to click right here where the footstep is, and I'm going to click and drag. And since I know that the end of my clip is where I want that footstep to be, and my mouse is hovering over the point where the footstep is, I just line those two points up. And now I should be pretty good. So that's pretty good. So now I have two footsteps lined up. If this was a long, more steady sound, that's how I would do it. Um, again, with footsteps, I usually just do it this first way. And that's basically it. Then I would mix it in, blend it in, add other sounds, right? So it's not so bare and weird sounding. So yeah, those are basically the two ways that I tend to line up video and audio. You can also get into using sync markers, which I have not personally gotten into yet, but maybe some of you guys can tell me what you think about using sync markers in the comments below. Um, let me know if you found that to be a lot better than uh, this type of method. Um, but basically, if you're doing a sync marker, you just do command comma, and it creates a sync marker, and then you can sync that with any point in the film. And with that, you can also have, for example, if you're in spot mode and you go to move something, you can then have it 
uh, sync that sync point. So sync point here is going to be my marker here, my sync marker. You can sync it with a specific spot in the time code. And you can also do stuff like click and then use shortcuts to move the, the actual sync point to that location instead of the head of the clip or the tail of the clip. But I think that's a topic for another video. So I'm not going to get into that right now. Um, I'm not going to get into sync markers right now. I just wanted to show you guys this quick uh, trick. Oops, sorry, I'm in spot mode still. So yeah, the basic idea behind the second one, again, in case you guys want just a little bit of a repeat here, is I pull up the head of the clip to where I want to line up my point in the audio file, and then I click on the actual point that I want to line up, and I just match those two, and that's it. So yeah, I hope you guys liked this video. I hope you found it useful. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. As always, like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff that YouTube people love. I would really appreciate it. And if you want to support my channel more directly, I do have a Patreon. So it's patreon.com slash Noise. And my patrons do get access to additional content. And thank you so much to all of my patrons. You guys really make this channel possible. So... I think that's about it for today. I come out with new videos every Wednesday and thank you for watching. Okay. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to put what pick, sorry. So basically what I'm going to do is going to, I'm, shit. <laughs>